brown cow. Brown chicken, 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 brown cow. This is fun. Warning, this program contains frank and mature discussions intended to educate and advocate on the subjects of sexuality, sex, and gender, and body positivity. Due to the nature of the topics being discussed, this may include subject matter and language that some may find offensive. This program is intended for adults only. If you are under the age of 18, if such material offends you, or if it is illegal to view such material in your community, please exit now. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to the Brown Chicken, Brown Cow podcast. Brown Chicken, Brown Cow. (laughs) (laughs) Jess Lee, you're doing our theme song today. Yes, all by myself. It's going to be a solo. (laughs) Brown Chicken, Brown Cow. That's it. That's the whole thing. How are you doing? Good. How are you, Heather Beck? I am so excited. I I am very excited about our guest today. Yeah. And just doing well in general. So. Good. Yeah, we have Sinclair Sexsmith on here. I'm really, really yes. excited. They've done some really cool stuff. I am I'm a fan. We need to stop bringing really cool people onto this podcast because it, it keeps make, making me feel like a slacker. <laughs> I'm like, shit, I haven't done shit. I know. No, I love our cool guests. Although I do too. I, I, I get a little bit... Um, a little bit flustered, and I, I get like, well, we don't have monkey today. I know. Very sad. So we don't have monkey blush a meter. So I know. I guess we'll just have to see what happens if we blush yeah, in, in I, place of monkey. So. I don't know. Like, scientifically, what will happen if we blush? I don't know. Are Do you think people... Spontaneous combustion are all likely. <gasps> oh. Spontaneous oh, shit. combustion. Okay. Well, the professor has spoken. The professor knows about these things. Yes. Combustion. Okay. Well, hopefully neither one of us spontaneously combusts. But, but... I, I do want to say that it would be okay if people did want to still tip us on Patreon. Yes, especially since we'll probably need the money, like, to recover from the burn uh, wounds. <laughs> Spontaneous <laughs> combust. But we do have a it's Patreon. It's hot in here. Okay, yeah. that was, like, an early 2000s reference. I'm That's sorry. Okay. But that. How dare you? <laughs> that is an era we do not talk about. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, well, should we talk about our Patreon? Should we bring on our guest? Should uh, we do both? Let's let's talk a little bit about our Patreon and like um, just if there's any upcoming stuff we want to check in about, like any totally. announcements that we have, and then then let's totally talk about our guest and talk to our guest. Yay! <laughs> well, first of all, so we'll mention our Patreon. Uh, we have a Patreon page. Um, and Patreon is a really cool platform where you can support us on a monthly level since we are a consistent podcast and it uh, gives us the ability to have awesome guests on like the way that we do um, and just compensate everyone for their hard work, Mm -hmm. uh, which everyone is putting in to make this podcast happen. Uh, So if you want to check that out, it's P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com and you can check out uh, the Brown Chicken Brown Cow podcast and uh, donate. We've got some really cool... um, sponsorship levels that you can choose and one of them is the monkey blush meter that we mentioned uh, okay. it's a cool perk you can select mm-hmm. depending on the level that you donate so go check yeah. it out it's a good and way to support us totally and people can buy us drinks yes for, for our recording sessions i recommend that because it has alcohol in it <laughs> <laughs> i like your reasoning thanks <laughs> Oh, awesome. Jessie. <laughs> I have awesome. priorities. You're yeah. awesome. Thank you. Man, let's just have this be the whole podcast. Like, we'll you're just jerk awesome. each other off and, like, no, that'll awesome. be great. <laughs> <laughs> no, you. No, you. <laughs> it's consensual. Um, isn't it called dilling each other off when we're women, though? I don't know. I don't give a f- Whichever. Okay. Whatever works for you. I'm into it. Tell me what your preferred terms are and I will use them. <laughs> Speaking of preferred terms, I think that this would be a good time to introduce our audience to pronouns. Like, yes. I don't know if we've had that conversation. We've had we've had one person on who's talked about their gender journey, yeah. but I'm not sure if we've talked about pronouns specifically. Absolutely. Um, and this definitely applies to our guests. So, yes. So what are your pronouns, Jessely? What pronouns do you use? My pronouns are she, her, hers. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, those are my pronouns. What are your pronouns? Oh my Pronouns are the same. <gasps> we have the same. Pro- we have so much in common. I know. Oh, We're man. both awesome. We both have the same pronouns. Bonding. Yes. Cool. Um, and when I said this, this applies to our guests. I didn't mean like this doesn't apply to everybody else. It just means yeah. um, it's it's a cool thing to talk about. Yeah, so. it is. Um, cool. So should we get started? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So uh, Sinclair, how are you doing? I'm great. Hi. Hi. Glad to be here. Glad to see you. Hi. Great to have you here. So you have done some amazing stuff. So uh, actually, do you want to introduce yourself and tell tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do? Sure. Um, so 
My name is Sinclair Sexsmith. I've been writing on the blog named Sugar Butch at sugarbutch.net since 2006. So it's now 11 years old. Oh, wow. um, it's sex, gender, kink, and relationships focused. Uh, a lot of it is my personal journey and my personal journaling about kind of coming to my own with those things. Yes. And uh, about halfway through, well, about maybe three or four years into the blogging, maybe earlier than that, actually, maybe two years in, I started teaching and being asked to come talk about those the things that I was writing about. So I started going to conferences and going to groups and events, and uh, and then I started traveling to colleges as well and um, doing uh, workshops with colleges. So I've been a writer and a teacher and um, and working with kind of the not safe for work topics <laughs> for, for at least that long and before then too. That is so great. And it looks like you also do some online e-courses. Yeah, that's right. So I started working with dominance and submission deeper and deeper online and um, decided to make some some courses about that um, where people could really get more uh, community and conversation around dominance and submission. So uh, often folks who are exploring it are really isolated or, or very private and they don't necessarily want to be seen in public or doing those kind of events. They, they feel like they could be outed. There might be some consequences. So so the online courses have been great. The big one is Submissive Playground, but there's also a little email course called Mad Dom Skills and a couple other things. Oh, I didn't know about Mad Dom Skills. I knew about Submissive Playground. Um, yeah. I've like shared that among my network before. Um, tell us, can you tell us a little bit about each of those? Sure. Um, Submissive Playground is an eight-week course and it's very in-depth. We have a all sorts of guest speakers um, where there's there's some videos for everybody to watch. There are various pieces of homework that people have as well. So they're reading either theory about DS and relationships or they're reading smut and they're reading, they're, they're uh, listening to interviews or watching videos of people who are giving them tips and, and ideas. And, um, and then we get together and talk, talk about each of the topics. So the topics are stand for BDSM and it's bondage, discipline, service, and masochism. Wow. That sounds like that homework is a total bummer. Just like not fun at all. I know. It sounds really kind of boring, right? <laughs> Such a chore. Know, reading hot erotica. And, and people love it. Some people hate it, honestly. <laughs> they're, they're just like, I can't deal with having to do th I just want to show up and I want to talk to people, but I don't yeah. necessarily want to like have to do stuff in between. Yeah, I think uh, time. It's, I, time it me. seems like th that is true for any, like, niche community, I feel like. People just don't want, just want to dive in and not necessarily do all the yeah. studying. Beforehand. It just depends. Then you also have submissives who are, like, you know, the ones who are in the front row being like, I want an A+. Plus. What else can I do, teacher? You know? <laughs> That's what and, kind of sub um, I am. I had right. a partner comment on that once. Like, you're very obedient. I'm like, I was a 4.0 <laughs> student, like, <laughs> overachieving submissive. <laughs> yeah. I love it. Like, I'm very obedient. <laughs> I'm not. No, bratty. No. Yeah, That's okay. a little bit. Um, but, you know, there's, there's, I'm guessing there's space for all kinds of submission and submissives Absolutely. in the submissive playground. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And there's folks who are switches and folks who are dominants, actually, who want to come in and understand submission more. Um, maybe they do or maybe they don't have any experience with their own submission. There's folks who um, who find the psychological pieces, the discipline and the service, the best and most fruitful parts for them. And then there's folks who find the physical pieces of like the bondage and the masochism and, and the kiki play to be the, the most rewarding parts. So, um, and there's people who like it all or who kind of don't like it all and mm. who, mm. who kind of go on to find whatever version they are. So right. it's yeah. not about like this one monolithic way to be a submissive. It's about finding out what kind you are and what you like so that right. people can, can uh, communicate that even better because you're way more likely to find the right kind of partnership or the right kind of play that matches yours if you know how to articulate it and ask for it. Wait, are you telling are you telling me that we have to learn about ourselves and then communicate our needs? That's just weird. <laughs> That's just weird. <laughs> That's awful. Um, awesome. Okay, so you so you clearly um, teach and write about 
um, dominance and submission. And then you also mentioned something about that your work and your writing has been a way of um, journeying through gender for you, which I feel like everybody can kind of benefit from hearing about. So um, first of all, in our intro, we were talking a little bit about pronouns. Can you, um, so your pronouns are they, they, them, right? Right. Okay. So for, for folks, if you don't mind, and if, if you do mind, I'm, I'm happy to share, but for folks who might be listening and they're like, what is that? A th they and them is a pronoun. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Well, so first of all, I just wanted to say, yes, they and them is valid for pronouns. Um, and is, uh, has that been part of your gender journey? Like kind of learning to communicate like you were talking about and express and be assertive about your own identity and pronouns? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, when I started Sugar Butch, this is kind of the long way around to that discussion, but I'll give you the backstory. Thank when you. I started Sugar Butch, I was writing just under the name Sinclair. It's a pseudonym. Um, maybe that's not obvious. Sinclair Sexsmith is not my name at birth. Um, that would be a really and cool name. When I started writing Erotica, I wanted you know another <laughs> another name to work under. And when I started Sugar Butch, it was really personal writing that I was doing, and I was kind of writing myself out of a relationship where we weren't having enough sex, and I was trying mm -hmm. to figure out if that was a legitimate reason to break up with someone, that kind of thing. <laughs> and, um, and so for a while it was just Sinclair. And then I started doing more interviews and more uh, teaching and people wanted more of a name than just a first name. Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't like, not like mm -hmm. Cher or something. I'm not that fancy. <laughs> Wait, but so, that would be okay too. But yeah, anyway, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so then I, so I, I ended up with the last name Sexsmith and, um, and then it didn't really make sense for me to be Ms. Sexsmith. Mm -hmm. So I went by Mr. Sexsmith, which, you know, in the kinky world, yeah. Mr. and Sir uh, suit me very well. Um, and so it was kind of coming from there, from those communities of sex and kink. And, you know, but when I got even further out into the world, when I did more gender activism, when I was teaching more college classes, people would start, because I had the honorific Mr., they would start calling me he and him. And I was like, well, okay, that's really curious. How does that feel? You know, and for a little while I felt open and just kind of try it out, mm -hmm. but it didn't really fit right eventually. And I felt like, um, I felt like it was just not, uh, not really seeing the whole me, I guess. And, uh, and, but then at that point, like she didn't really fit either in, uh, and so I, I started looking for in-between kind of pronouns. And, and they and them is the one that's most comfortable for me. There are a couple others that are pretty popular, uh, like Z and here, um, as far as kind of non-binary pronouns go. Mm -hmm. That's great. I like the last name Sexsmith because it makes it sound like you're just like making sex. I was literally thinking that. You're the smith of sex. <laughs> like you're just like that's crafting amazing. it, yeah, like with a yes. hammer. <laughs> right, kind of a blacksmith. That's very sex. cool. That's yes. an awesome journey. So, okay, your your blog is called The Sugar Butch Chronicles. Can you tell, mm -hmm. I don't know what sugar butch means. Is that a term you crafted or is that a well-known term in the community? Uh, I mean, I, I don't think I'm the only person that's ever used it, but yeah, I'm, it's it's not a well-known term. It's not something people really use. It's kind of more like a brand name. Mm -hmm. um, it came because I was having trouble calling myself Butch or a Butch. And my girlfriend at the time, this was before the blog started, was like, well, you're more like a sugar Butch. And, <laughs> so and, it's, oh, literally. and it, was... it was sweet. And, <laughs> literally, literally sweet. right? And, and, um, and it fit a little better. So I, it, it, that started kind of me being able to claim that identity a little more. And a lot about what I wrote about in the early years on Sugar Butch was about butch identity and mm -hmm. coming to it and what it means and not this cliche version of what a butch is, but into a current and applicable version of what a butch is for myself. That's awesome. So you, you really had a journey of your own, and I'm guessing that your journey was somehow informed by, um, by others. I mean, you know, you're, I'm sure you're... Uh, I know that you are because I've seen some of the feedback on your blog about how you've influenced other folks. Who have been some folks that have influenced you? <clears throat> like, do you have favorite erotica authors or do you have like favorite other folks in the queer and kink community that really kind of helped you come to your own understanding of yourself? Sure. Absolutely. Um, the, the main, the, the major butch icons, I would say, are people like Ivan Coyote and Bear oh. Bergman and Patrick Khalif, yeah. Patrick is a trans man, so, uh, you know, I kind of hesitate to 
call him Butch, but he's um, uh, ha- still to me has some of that Butch energy, whatever that means. Um, so I don't mean to belittle that or put them in the same category, right? There's complicated gender politics around those things. But I really looked up to Pat Califia and all of his work, mm. especially the kink work that he did, devoured that stuff. That's um, amazing. Love it. Yeah, I could say a lot about books and what to recommend and all. <laughs> I'm sitting here in front of my bookshelf. <laughs> Lots of ideas on that. <laughs> I want to hear so much more about that. Yeah. But unfortunately, we got to take a little break. Uh, but fortunately, we get to hear from our sponsors. So we'll be right back after this. Yay. Hi guys, it's Sean Monkey Mackney from Brown Chicken Brown Cow. You know what I suggest? I suggest you go to Lucky bloke.com. Why? Because you can order your condoms online every month. Let's say you have multiple lovers that require different types of condoms, small, medium, large. You don't have to go to the store and buy all these different condoms. You can actually order them from Lucky Bloke. Let's say you have a lover that's latex sensitive. You can get latex free condoms in that same package with everything else. It is a fantastic program. It is a monthly service. You need to go to luckybloke.com and tell Monkey sent you. (laughs) Trust me. They know who I am. All right, and we are back with Sinclair Sexsmith, uh, and we were just talking about some really cool stuff that they do. Um, So Sinclair, uh, I I think it's really kind of amazing when anyone has the bravery to go through their own uh, sort of sexual journey of self-discovery, but you brought yours to like a public arena where people could be on that experience, be on that journey with you, and I think that is really awesome. What made you decide to start doing that? Hmm. You know, well, I grew up in the 90s. I I graduated high school in 96, and it was just, I'd spent a couple years um, online on, you know, like the bulletin boards and the uh, Telnet chat rooms. Mm -hmm. And um, I I started when kind of Netscape came out, and that graphic interface started growing. I started building websites for myself. And a lot of what was happening were people writing about their own lives in that time. Um, Live Journal was starting, and then shortly after, Diary Land, and then, you know, sources, uh, um, uh, um, what are they called? Um, Programs like Movable Type and uh, Gray Matter that you could install on your own blogs and run your kind of your blog. No, but it wasn't really called blog. So I don't understand right? anything you just said, but, <laughs> but I'm with you, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So basically I was a geek about it in the early, cool. in the late nineties. <laughs> and then before it was called a blog, it was, it was all journals. And so then it started being blogs and people started getting more commercial about it and it became, you know, cooking blogs and all sorts of things. Right. And, um, and so when I started getting writing that I liked, uh, around this, you know, uh, relationship that was, challenging for me and around uh, that was a big kind of writer's block period for me as well. When I started getting writing that I liked, I did what I knew what to do with it and which was to put it on an online anonymous Mm -hmm. blog. So it was probably the, I don't know, eighth or something anonymous blog I'd run. Mm -hmm. So it just, it was a medium that was comfortable for me and interesting. Mm -hmm. And I loved connecting with other people that way. I love connecting and writing. I love being able to, to, um, dive into my own inner, landscapes of um emotionality and and kind of sense of self and Mm -hmm. and excavate that through writing it's really valuable for me that's really cool so it sounds like you came to it pretty organically through uh, a process of feeling comfortable with the medium and 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 then sort of blossoming into more of this public figure from a space of anonymity um what do you have so uh, we kind of alluded to this before, but so I know that you have folks who follow you. Um, <clears throat> that might be one of them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, you know, I, I'm sure that, you know, people discover your work and it, it might be life-changing for them. What what type of advice do you have for people who are looking at exploring kink for the first time? I think um, there's a couple things, right? One is explore, 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 read everything you can, watch a bunch of porn, you know, uh, learn about the kind of things that you're into, go to a bunch of classes, go to the conferences, go to the, you know, local groups, whatever, whatever you can do, just like learn as much as possible, be a student, be willing to be, you know, very uh, beginner's mind. Yeah. Yeah. Like just admit, I just don't know about this and I want to, um, people are eager to help and they're eager to talk. And, and then the second thing is just, 
um, I wouldn't suggest doing it in a vacuum. So go find the communities who work with this. You know, there's a lot of people out there who are interested. There's a lot of little groups in mo- pretty much all the major cities and many smaller cities, many smaller towns and communities. And it's so important to access that and to see other people, um, you know, out and proud with their identity or struggling to be out and proud or, you know, not even knowing what it means to be kinky or knowing exactly what it means and being willing to tell you everything about it, you know? So doing it, like sure. exploring for yourself, but then also doing it in a context of community is really valuable. Well, yeah. And then, um, also wh- where would you suggest that people find that community? Cause people might be like, I don't know what to do. And they might just, you know, they might find that point, but then they might feel kind of isolated about like, Oh, how do I, actually meet other people uh i mean i would i mean there's always google right like sure. google, city name <laughs> there is let me google that for you dot com right <laughs> but, mm-hmm. but right. there's a, a social media site called fat life where people mm-hmm. do kink um meetups and kink events and bulletin boards and you can make your own pri- profile and all those things um sometimes that's really useful sometimes it's kind of terrible um i know that for a lot of my cis women friends they get a lot of um a lot of unwanted messages and their you know private messages from guys that they have no interest in hearing from you know um so a lot of that can be really hard especially for feminine women um and and it can be a place of connection. Uh, so the other place I would say to check is any local sex toy store that you have. Um, any sort of, especially the kind of feminism, fe- feminist, sex positive, queer positive ones, they have often really good uh, mailing lists or they have bulletin boards there and you can ask them like what's going on in the community. They might have classes there, all of that stuff. So that's yeah. a great local resource. Oh, that is a great resource. I that hadn't is. thought about that. I knew about, I knew about FetLife, but I hadn't thought about actually going to a sex toy store and asking that's like being on their mailing list yeah sweet tip number three seventy <laughs> awesome <laughs> yeah and so many places tips. like good vibrations which are here in mm-hmm. the bay area there's a bunch of those here they um you know they have classes in almost all of their uh stores so you can go and meet people that way you, or if you know, you find an instructor that you like, just say, where else do you teach? Mm. What else is going on in the community here? I want to learn. Where do I go? Absolutely. Well, so getting back to talking about the community, can you, um, you have a post on inclusivity in the community. Can you talk a little bit more about what that means? About inclusivity? Um, I, I mean, I think that the the general kinky BDSM world, wherever, you know, just it's, it's not this kind of safe haven. Mm -hmm. It's not this, um, secret, wonderful, you know, unicorn playground where everybody's happy and nothing ever bad happens. Right. Like, but it should be, I want it to be. I know. know, I want it to be too. Just like I want the kink world or the queer worlds to be that way or the feminist world to be that that way. But But, they can feel that way when you first discover them. Right. Like all of a sudden I go to like a gay bar and, and it's, all my people and I'm like oh my god Mm -hmm. finally I'm not alone I'm not this marginalized weirdo I'm I'm I belong I'm here you know I'm part of this and and at the same time those communities are microcosms of the larger communities they're not they don't exist in a vacuum either they're not just these safe spaces for everybody Um, they have a lot of racism they can have homophobia Mm -hmm. they can have uh, you know class issues they can have anything you have Mm -hmm. uh, as far as hierarchy and power in the larger world that can happen in these smaller communities. So, so I think a lot of times queers and other folks who are, who have marginalized identities, um, come into the BDSM world and they see, uh, heterosexual, you know, dominant men with heterosexual submissive women who are mostly white and they kind of go, where do I fit? How do I belong? Um, and however, there's huge places for, many, many identities to belong and many people to find their way. It just might take a little more digging for, Mm -hmm. uh, you know, queers or for people of color or for folks who have very specific fetishes, for example, Mm -hmm. or, or who kind of have identities that are unusual that they, you know, that they don't see reflected in the mainstream. Right. So what do you think about are some ways like for folks who are involved in the kink community, but are kind of just starting to become aware of these issues? What are some ways that um, we can make our communities more inclusive? Like how can we intentionally do that? 
I think, I mean, as, as community leaders and as, as a kind of organizer myself, who's, I've done many, many workshops, not just leading them, but, put, mm-hmm. but producing them as well, um, things like accessibility is really important, you know, making sure that um, you're in a space that doesn't have a lot of stairs or if it does have stairs to let everybody know that beforehand, mm-hmm. to have comfortable places to sit, to have even like chairs with no arms for people who have bigger bodies mm-hmm. and, um, and, and letting people know that in advance, reaching out to other kinds of groups, um, making, having diverse speakers, not just, you know, um, all heterosexual white people, but having queer folks, having gender queer folks, um, you know, making sure that the visibility is, is there and not just, uh, reinforcing the norms. I love that. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, all right, I'm getting the word that we have to take another commercial break yeah, pretty soon. Stage manager bills, is, uh, so. is intervening again. I and the, our Corgi <laughs> stage manager has told us it is time to take a break. There is literally a Corgi right here by our feet. <laughs> so sweet. Um, okay, so we'll be right back with Sinclair Sexsmith. Hi, guys. This is Sean Monkey Mackney. Monkey for short. You know what? If you're in town here in Sacramento or if you're anywhere, you need to check out Midtown Moxies. They are a Sacramento burlesque troupe that is blowing my doors off. They are amazing. Generally, they have two shows a month. One called Midtown Moxies and one called Moxie Crush. You need to go to MidtownMoxies.com or find them on Facebook. They are amazing. They're beautiful. They're funny as hell. Trust me, I wouldn't be advertising with them if I didn't believe in them. They are freaking fantastic. Enough said. Go to MidtownMoxies.com. All right, and we are back with Sinclair Sexton and Sexsmith. I'm sorry, Sinclair. Sinclair, I apologize. <laughs> Please don't hate me, Sinclair. <laughs> All good. Um, so you're part of a collaborative that founded uh, something called Body Trust in 2014. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that sounds really cool. I'm really interested in hearing more about what Body Trust is. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Sure. So Body Trust uh, we call it a, a sacred somatic collaborative or an artist collaborative. Um, sometimes lately I've been just calling it my spiritual community. Mm. It's um, looking at the body as a, a temple for um, connection, both for connection with other people and connection with the earth and connection with whatever kind of energetic divinity there is. Oh, I love uh, that. That's beautiful. That's- thank you. So we put on workshops. We also have a podcast called Pleasure Lab, Tools to Use the Body as a Laboratory of Transformation. Ooh, and, that and that's pretty fun. Right now we're doing some uh, an interview series. We're on season two interviewing embodiment pioneers, which is Ooh. interesting. Lots of things about Tantra, lots of things about um, communication, desire, sex, kind of uh, eroticism beyond just you know genital sex Mm -hmm. stuff but but you know food can be erotic and jumping in a river can be erotic there's all Mm -hmm. these ways of having kind of erotic experiences with our bodies so Mm -hmm. so we look at a lot of different pieces not just the sex parts uh we have a podcast we have a newsletter that is like beautiful writing every week that we gift to people we have um in-person workshops so right now we mainly do a a five-day advanced retreat in the summer, but we have some beginning retreats as well. Oh, we just missed Aww. it. I'm sad. Is this, is, this is all under Body Trust or Pleasure Lab, or what is it under if people want to find yeah. out about more about it? Like if just some anonymous person, it's totally not me. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Wants to find out about uh, that. It's all under Body Trust. It's bodytrustcircle.com. Okay. Body Trust And I can give you some links, too, to put in the show notes. Cool. That I, sounds awesome. I just want to go out on a limb and say that founders of artist collaboratives are really cool people. You should just <laughs> send them sandwiches and uh, other <laughs> support them on Patreon. Yes. I was just going to say yes, the tip them on Patreon. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Uh, oh, that is so fantastic. Okay. So um so so you said that there's like a 5-day retreat. Can you t- I don't know how much of this is like proprietary information, but what can you tell can you describe a little bit about what happens at those retreats or sure. I don't know how much you're able to talk about? Yeah. Yeah. Some of it is proprietary, not necessarily because we're all secretive and we think, I don't know, people will steal it or something, but because it's really difficult to translate what happens in a kind of temple space into daily life and things that happen there. It just, it wouldn't make any sense Mm -hmm. to explain. And, um, I mean, I'm sure that's true of things like, 
I don't know, doing an ayahuasca journey or going to Burning Man or, you know, other kinds of things. They, they make sense in this context, but they're harder outside to, mm-hmm. to, tra- to translate. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes we talk about it as, as going from black and white to technicolor. Mm-hmm. Then you can come back to black and white and try to describe, you know, red and blue, but that doesn't mean anybody really gets it. No kidding. Yeah. That was my so, struggle when I had a weed brownie and then watched a laser show. I know how to describe <laughs> yeah. it to people. <laughs> to me. Did not know. Anyway, <laughs> sensory rich so a lot of what we do here is, is get grounded into our bodies, explore um, pleasure, explore connection, explore uh, intention. So people come in, they can come in with different kinds of intention, like, you know, letting go of challenge, letting go of this relationship that just ended, um, finding my own two feet, finding my, my strength and my purpose, finding, you know, a way forward, whatever it is, lots of, often lots of grief, lots of excitement, lots of big, bold energy. Um, this year the theme was resilience and we Mm. talked a lot about the state of the United States right now and how Mm. challenging and how difficult it, uh, it's been to watch so many of these events unfold and, um, how exhausting it is to be working in activism, that kind of stuff. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, talk about the personalized political. Like, is there anything more radical than embodying your own pleasure and your own sense of self in under a political climate that tells you not to? <laughs> exactly. Oh, that's really well, and I think a couple really key skills for it have to do with being able to articulate what you want mm-hmm. and then being able to articulate again when something starts happening that you don't want mm-hmm. or when your desire changes, right? You might be like, I want this. I want this chocolate ice cream and then halfway through you're like no I don't really want this I want vanilla Mm -hmm. and so being able to instead of feeling obligated for the person who served you chocolate ice cream to be offended or something um, being able to really speak up and say this is what I want so it has a lot to do with um, agency and one's own kind of strength to to say those things and and you know knowledge and practice and those are things I think of as an ongoing practice for myself. It's not yeah. like I learned how to say yes and no once and now I'm done and just like check, yes. right? Like I have to, and then later I'm like, wait, I completely forgot. I could have said no to that, you know? <laughs> um, and then sure. the other piece is about um, uh, crafting our own experiments um, with with ritual and with other people and with mm-hmm. our bodies in basically any way that we want to. I mean, people wrestle or they run outside or they, Mm -hmm. you know, have all sorts of contact. They might have massage. They might have genital touch. They might have, uh, whatever. They might have somebody pull their hair. They might have flogging. They might have all sorts of things. So they might be able to articulate and get a thing that they've been desiring. Um, and it can be transformative. It can be healing. It can be, you know, really challenging. It can push edges. It's, very interesting work and I I love it I crave it when I'm not in temple and it's really personally just transformed Mm -hmm. a lot of what I do and it informs everything that's really beautiful so along the same lines of kind of expanding your horizons and sort of embodying your sexuality we talked a little bit about what uh, people who are just getting into kink should uh, what kind of what what path they should uh, follow or explore uh, to get into it. But what advice do you have for people who have maybe been in kink for a little while but are looking to kind of expand their horizons? Hmm. Uh, community again is key. You know, having discussions about it, finding new, some new edges to push. Um, you know, gently coming up against where an edge is or where things are hard and going like, what's hard about that? What can I, yeah, how can I on? work with this? Yeah. And, um, there's a lot of really wonderful um, retreats around the U S. Um, I know some of them in Canada, but I don't know as many abroad or, you know, Europe. I don't know anything about whatever the how, whatever amazing retreats happen in, you know, Asia, Pacific Rim or any of that. But I know in the U S you know, we have things like, Dark Odyssey, which puts on four, I think, uh, mm-hmm. events a year, and they are amazing kink retreats, and that will open up someone if they are not, if they're bored with kink or if they need yeah. a little kick in the pants or something. Something like that is amazing. There's you know days of classes all day, and then days of play parties at night, and Love people it. are you know clothing optional the whole time. Sometimes they take over a hotel. Sometimes mm-hmm. they're out at like a former. Boy Scout camp that's been converted to this amazing kinky summer camp, you know, so there's tons of options for 
um, for learning and growth in the conferences. Adventures. That sounds amazing. Um, you know, one thing I was just thinking is that we've sort of been um, throwing around these terms and, you know, our, our podcast has listeners of, of all different levels of experience and, um, and walks of life. identities, walks of life, sure. Um, and so I'm, I'm noticing that we're, we, you know, we kind of use the word BDSM, then we're using the word kink. And I just wanted to take a moment and um, please feel free to, to do this for us if you want to, Sinclair, or we can as well. But to kind of chat about the difference between the terms like BDSM, kink, SM, like what, you know, people might sort of use these words interchangeably, but maybe they don't exactly mean the same thing. So that's sure. a question uh, or a statement. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think of kink as kind of the biggest umbrella of all of these things. Mm -hmm. um, SM is sadomasochism, which has a lot more to do with with pain specifically, or or as I would rather call it, um, intense sensation, mm. um, because it's not always painful, <laughs> um, despite what it might look like. It's about it's about sensation to the body. Mm -hmm. um, BDSM is kind of you know an, an enhancement of that, where it includes dominance and submission with the B with the D and the S in the middle bondage and discipline. So these are acronyms, um, BDSM. So it's a little more, more, uh, expanded from SM. Um, but again, I think of kink kind of as the, as the broader category above those things. So somebody, other things that might be included in kink are things like leather and the leather lifestyle, which tends to be, um, very gay male dominated. It's mm -hmm. kind of come up and out of the gay male communities of the sixties and seventies and, uh, has a huge, you know, identity and life of its own, uh, in various cities, the like leather communities are, are, are a thing. Not <laughs> and very that's popular under among cows, so. though. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> she said they're not very that was, popular among cows. <laughs> that was a really lowbrow joke. I apologize to everyone. I want to apologize yeah, to our goofball. listeners. And I, <laughs> please continue. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> and uh, the, I mean, there's a variety of things about leather that is that that are more specific. A lot of times, it has to do with protocol and discipline and hierarchy and um, respect for community and elders. There's a lot of ethics involved. People, mm -hmm. you know, within the leather world might disagree about the different kind of ethics but sure. but there's often a kind of honor in in the leather uh mm -hmm. that's that's a little different from kink or a little different from bdsm i should say mm -hmm. um and there and then there's people like the folks like the fetish community which might be a little different they might not be into bondage discipline sadism masochism but they might be really into feet or dressing like a lolita or you know um giantism or whatever they might have these amazing deep fetishes that put them in the kink world but don't necessarily they don't necessarily go with leather and they don't necessarily go with like the you know sensation play that kind of thing i don't even know what giantism is what is that somebody getting off on someone else being very very large oh. and them being very very small that kind of thing the more you know <laughs> well, vice versa, i suppose they might be into being very very large to That's learn cool. things, new things every day. Hey, so I think we have to take a break soon. <laughs> um, let's let's listen to a word from our sponsors, and let's come back with Sinclair Sexsmith and more amazing hot talk on BDSM and gender and sexuality and all the things that I want to spend my life talking about. Hi guys, this is Sean Monkey Mackinney, Monkey for short. What you need to know now is that brown chicken, brown cow needs your love. It needs your help, and it, well, you know, personally, we could use your money. But short of that, what you need to do is go out and like our Facebook page. Number two, give us a review on whatever podcast ability you have. Go out to iTunes, go out to Google Play, give us a good review because that helps. Number three, subscribe. Subscribe to our podcast because that helps our numbers helps us with advertisers, helps us with everything. It makes it look good, actually. And number four, and this is very important. Come close to the speaker. It's fantastic. You can go out to Patreon and support us on Patreon. That's patreon.com forward slash BCBC podcast. You can support us at whatever level of support you think you can manage. I don't want you to give us money if you can't do it, but I want you to give us some money and we'll give you back some love as well. We'll give you back some stuff. We'll talk about you on the radio. Who knows? But in the end, supporting us helps keep the show going. Subscribing to the podcast gives us better numbers. And liking our Facebook page, guess what? You always know when the show's coming. So, this is Monkey. You're you. We are together. Cuckoo, cuckoo, Fantastic. See you on the next show. 
All right, we're back with Sinclair Sexsmith. Uh, so Sinclair, you have you are quite a writer. You have written many, many things, many different uh, queer uh, queer kink eroticas. Um, I've read some of those things. Mm. Heather mm. Beth may or may not have read mm. some of those things. <laughs> I don't know why I'm whispering. <laughs> I have read many of those things. Yeah, why are you? Why are I you all know. whispery? Um, <laughs> do you have any current publications or new projects that you are working on? Well, I just finished a series for Autostraddle called View from the Top that was about topping and dominance uh, and queerness and gender and relationships and, you know, all of the things that go together with topping and dominance for me. Um, mm. So I'm looking at that little, that series as a whole and mm -hmm. looking at what I could maybe do with it. Um, I'm also working on a novella project where I've got six novellas and they're, they're written, but I'm getting them into the ebook format and getting them out into the world. So that's mostly my writing project right now. I actually took a day job not quite a year ago because, believe it or not, writing erotica doesn't pay very well. What? <laughs> so uh, I have, I after almost 10 years of struggle about this, I, I, I broke down and got a day job. So I'm writing a lot more things like, you know, social media copy for a for my job. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I understand your struggle. Yeah. Can I, with obviously without outing you about, you know, any other names you use and any other work you do, uh, just really curiously, were you able to actually use your work that you've done as Sinclair Sexsmith to sort of like launch you into other uh, more vanilla or normative or muggle worlds? Muggle. <laughs> Jess is yeah, wearing her yes. Hufflepuff shirt today. I do. I have my Hufflepuff shirt <laughs> so on, my Deathly Hallow earrings. Can you talk a little bit about, the, I don't, about that? Yeah, uh, absolutely. I mean, my, my legal name is also tied to erotica. I've written it under my legal name before I started this blog. And um, project, I like to call it a project more than a blog. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the work that I'm doing now around gender and sexuality, it was relevant to talk about how I... Um, have been a speaker at colleges and have coordinated oh, cool. workshops and have uh, produced, you know, reading series or a SM series for local community folks. And, and so I was able to put all of that in there and, and talk about that experience and, um, and use it as, you know, uh, something that was relevant to the position. Um, that's not always true of jobs I've applied for, of course. Sure, sure. And sometimes I've done things like temp work where I put, you know, um, social media strategy and mm -hmm. online business consultant and things like that where I, um, and, and web design, you know, all of which I <laughs> do kind of the high level or the high level is not the right word because it implies more, but like the, ab the, the admin level of running a, a sex and gender project online mm -hmm. with, you know, courses and email lists and all of those things. So, so those, all those skills are very translatable. I just don't necessarily reveal the URL that I use. Sure. Well, I was also going to comment on that because, I mean, and you had said that like sort of how you even got started with blogging was that you'd already been online and, and doing other um, projects online. But, but your website is also really beautifully designed, and so you did all of that as well. The I'm current hearing. site with the, the kind of looks like a book with the red on, you know, half page and then the white on the ha other half page, that was designed by my boy who is a mm. professional web designer. Oh, very cool. Um, but up until just a few years ago, they were my designs, yes. Oh, very cool. That's awesome. Okay. Um, can yeah, he's significantly upgraded my my branding though, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and I do have some experience with all of that and, and that's a lot of what I do at work now too, but um, but as far as my own work goes, I have, it's been a relief to focus on the writing and the content and not so much, you know, my website is broken and now I have to go learn how WordPress databases right. work or something. And I can just be like, hi, will you fix this please? Or, yes. you know, on the other hand, boy, get over here on your knees and fix this shit right now. <laughs> One of the advantages on, of being a dominant, right? Convenient, yeah. <laughs> that, as long as that's in your relationship agreements, so that's awesome. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yes, it is. Okay, I want to. I'm really curious. I want to kind of shift gears a little bit, but can you talk to us about what you call the kinky desire map, please? Sure. Um, so, um, it's something the boy and I developed to think about the progression of of kink and kind of how to follow what you like and what you don't like. Mm -hmm. And often there's there's this kind of spark moment of oh my God, I think I might be kinky or, oh my God, what, <laughs> what is that hairbrush spanking on this, on this 
one TV show, how do I, how do I get that? I think I might want that. Or why is mm-hmm. my dick hard or whatever. Right. <laughs> and, um, and then kind of how to develop that, how to, you know, seek out community, how to look for things that are validating of that experience, how to, how to follow that desire and, and do experiments about it. Um, that's one of the pieces of the body trust spirit. My spiritual community mm-hmm. philosophy is, um, to, conduct the experiment and collect the data. So regardless of whatever experiment it is, um, conduct it, do the experiment, pause and go, hmm, what did I learn? What, what was that about? What, what's the data here? And that has been transformative to a lot of my work, not just sex and relationships, but also like, um, you know, when my like a uh, girlfriend's parents come to town who are really kind of on the homophobic side and, mm-hmm. you know, we don't have a good time and I never want to talk to them. How do we deal with that? But they, but you know, they're, mm. they love their daughter, blah, blah. So you were like, okay, let's do an experiment where we go to the movies and we don't talk and mm. we just hang out together and it's air conditioned and that's really great. But <laughs> then after that, air went conditioning. To the dining- we appreciate yeah. that in Sacramento. Sorry, please continue. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. And this summer has been so hot. Yeah, um, beastly. You know, and then, you de- and then you decide, okay, then let's go to a diner after and we'll talk about the movie and, you know, mm-hmm. go on our merry ways. But, oh, no, the diner had alcohol, so everybody got tipsy and then it turned mm. terrible and we were all there for way too long. So then the data is like, movie, good, alcohol, bad. You know, <laughs> the timing, we need to like ha- plan to get out of the interaction, you know, so I have to go do something at 7 p.m. or whatever it is. So, you know, this is just a random detailed example of collecting data but I I think that is very very true around kink stuff as well Mm -hmm. so experiment collect the data experiment again collect the data and I I love approaching things like that because it means that there's that nobody can fail it means that there's nothing wrong with data that says wow I'm really not into that (laughs) because that's just good data yeah you know Like, all right, I won't do that again. I love this framing and this, like, system that you have in place that's kind of, like, transferable to different um, problems. That's very cool. Yeah. Well, and I think the um, permission to explore is huge, and so often we just don't give ourselves permission to explore. Mm -hmm. You know, there's so much baggage attached to it. We think someone will think something of us. It's, It's amazing to find someone or multiple someones who will help us with our explorations and then whose explorations we can support too. And, and the question also can become, you know, for the science nerds out there, like I did this experiment, but what if I tweaked some of the variables <laughs> and mm-hmm. would it, different? you know, would I get something different out of it? Like, Oh, I had a really good time having sex in that, you know, BDSM play party, but sure. I was really, really cold. So next time I really need to bring my own blanket or shawl or something. Right. Right. So, it's like a constant, like, talks. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say it's like a constant like tweaking and, and kind of using the data to feed back and, and improve the experience. Yeah, yeah exactly. All Although sometimes you just know, like, nope, I tried that, not yeah, going to do that. But it. other times you're like, well, if something was different, that might have gone way better. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. I love it. And I love that we don't have to, I love that, um, you know, that, that we don't need to have this idea of like throwing the baby out with the bathwater of like, oh, sad, I thought I was kinky, but I guess I'm not I because I was not. too cold. But it's like, no, bring a fucking blanket. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, some people have the tendency to have an experience, let their fear overtake them and be like, no, 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 I'm not going to do that again because it didn't work out perfectly the way I wanted it to. So, uh, so we've, we've asked you a lot of uh, questions, but what's something that you wish we had asked you? Oh, gosh. Um, That's a tough one, I know. Or, like, is there anything? We just wanted to give you an opportunity to, like, say things. Yeah, say say things (laughs) if you want to. (laughs) Well, one thing that I didn't, one term that I didn't define that I wanted to throw out there is cisgender. I don't know how common that is in kind of general worlds right now. I'm pretty Mm -hmm. mired in the in the trans, gender, queer, you know, non-binary worlds. Mm -hmm. So that's becoming a standard, staple word to describe basically someone who is not trans. Mm-hmm. So a transgender person is uh, has a gender that's different than their gender assigned at birth, mm-hmm. usually something like that. And a cisgender person has a gender that agrees with the gender that they were assigned at birth. Um, yeah, that's a slightly simplified version. You know, there's various other pieces of, of gender and identity and such. But um, but I would love it if more folks were using that word and were aware of what it was. 
I love it. Thank you for bringing that up. I think that's really important. Um, and this is like definitely not a perfect analogy, but oftentimes um, when I'm in spaces where I'm, you know, leading a circle or a class or whatever, and I'm asking for pronouns, and anybody who kind of looks at me all quizzically and, and confused, I, I like to tell them like, if you don't know what cisgender means, you're probably cisgender. <laughs> not necessarily, <laughs> but that's often the case where it's mm -hmm. like, it, it's um, in opposition or a lot, uh, kind of the inverse of trans because otherwise we just end up using like transgender and normal and then we don't like kind of exactly. question what those norms are. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And the same is true with pronouns I think where people go well I just use normal pronouns. Well that's not anybody can use any pronoun and so mm -hmm. I don't <laughs> so so naming it and being able to say this is the pronoun I use is really important. Uh, and I, I, you know, I want to encourage people to ask if they don't know what pronouns are. Mm -hmm. It's really easy to just go, oh, yeah, I was walking to the store the other day with her. Wait, her, does she use she pronouns? Do they use she pronouns? Oh, she pronouns. Okay, great. I was walking to the store with her the other day and et cetera. This thing happened. Sure. Um, so it can just be that casual in conversation. And it, yes, it's awkward maybe to get used to, but um, but it's very respectful and it shows a lot of care on someone's part. So it's, it's not disrespectful to ask and uh, just do it quickly and easily. And, um, uh, don't make it about you if you mess it up, you know, that kind of thing. Like, Beautiful. Oh no, I forgot that was your pronoun. Okay. Sorry. I'll change that going forward, which is really different than, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. I'm really very supportive mm -hmm. of trans people and I love <laughs> blah, 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 which is about, you know, you needing. And that. now it's all about you having to prove that you're a good person and you're not transphobic. And now it's all about you. And then the, everybody feels shitty rather when you could have just said like, Oh, my, my bad. bad. <laughs> right. Jinx. <laughs> just not bad. And the, you know, as as we're doing gender and pronoun PSAs, I also yeah. want to say that they is a perfectly valid singular pronoun, yep. despite yes. what many people would think. Mm -hmm. I personally am a very geeky about language English major, mm -hmm. and um, uh, and I want to say that you know, if it was good enough for people like Shakespeare and mm -hmm. Chaucer to use in their <laughs> yes. work, which they did, mm -hmm. then it's good enough for me. <laughs> Yeah, totally. Uh, and I want to say that language evolves, and that's really important too, to allow yes. it to evolve. That's a whole like can of worms we could open. Oh my god, I want to have language evolving. Stuff. Yes, totally. <laughs> we'll get it here later, and then we'll talk about all of that. Oh my yes. gosh, we are going to have you back on. It's going to be hot yes. again. Um, so hot. Um, okay, so yeah. Oh, I was just gonna say the same thing you were gonna say. Were you? You were gonna say you have a crush on Sinclair Sussmix? Uh, Sussmix? Sinclair Sussmix. <laughs> well, I've already butchered their name once, so I could just yes. do it again. Right? right? You were gonna, no, no. I think we were gonna say that. Unfortunately, we're winding down on time. Yes, we are. But it's been so great having you on, and I have learned so many awesome things today. Yeah. And I have like this laundry list of cool shit I need to go check out now. So thank yes. you for providing us with some awesome resources. Totally. So um, okay. last thing we want to find out about you is um, you've, you've shared sugarbitch.net. You've shared a little bit about um, Body Trust and Pleasure Lab. But are there other places that people can find you, can subscribe, can follow you, can support you on Patreon, et cetera? Yes, I do have a Patreon, patreon.com slash Mr. Sexsmith, MR Sexsmith. And right now that's really the best place to follow me because I'm writing all over the web and I'm doing podcasts like this and I'm um, you know, keeping a private journal there for the patron specifically, because I, I just don't write my really current woes online how I used to. As you can yeah. imagine, the Internet's a little different now than it was 11 years ago when I started this. Mm -hmm. And um, and so that's the best place to follow me. Of course, I have the Twitter and the Facebook and the, the Instagram and things like that. So if you want to follow any of those things, those are easy to to look me up with. And okay. um Sugarbridge.net has the has also is you know has the umbrella. Everything's there. My books, the workshops. Um, so that that's kind of the the homepage, the <laughs> the landing. The mothership. The mothership. <laughs> I was at the landing strip, but then I thought it. <laughs> it sounds like something different. Right. Yeah. The landing strip. <laughs> oh, I just I just was smelling what you're cooking all of a sudden. Okay, that's funny. <laughs> Uh, visual, <laughs> yes. Um, weirdly enough, I actually went to an airport last night. It was like... How weird? It was the middle of nowhere. It was like up Were in Were you the taking an airplane? Because that would be no. less weird. I, no, no. Okay. It wa I wasn't taking an airplane. Just <laughs> a friend and I went to an airport in the middle of the night. We Like you do. Like, it was... I'm going to stop talking. We can cut this part out. <laughs> I have so many more questions. 
<laughs> All right, I think we're wrapping this up. Sinclair, thank you so much for being on with yes. us. We really appreciate you coming on very much. Oh, thanks for having me. It was great. It's great fun to talk. All right, excellent. And uh, again, for those of you listening, feel free to check out our Patreon. Uh, like us on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, probably. And, <laughs> and follow, us, follow on us on YouTube, YouTube because once we get 100 subscribers on YouTube, we're able to get a, um, our own link, a custom, right? custom little name instead of being like youtube.com slash xbjt234861. Yes. We want to be She's BCBC Podcast. YouTube. That's not our YouTube channel. Right, don't, so go don't go to there. That I don't know what exact that we're into. That was just me inventing a thing yes but we want to be youtube.com slash bcbc podcast and we have some great vodcasts on there so go check us out see what we look like yeah see our faces they're yeah. beautiful especially heather beth she's doing oh, great <laughs> i don't know also that. review us on itunes it's all good okay yes thank you all right thanks Fantastic. so much again st Clair, and uh thanks everyone for listening bye-bye for information on becoming a sponsor, advertising with us, or becoming a guest on our show, visit us at brownchickenbrowncowshow.com. Copyright 2017, Brown Chicken Brown Cow Show and Podcast, and Mary U Creative Solutions. All rights reserved. Brown Chicken Brown Cow. 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 Brown Chicken Brown Cow.